Hey guys, welcome back. We just wrapped up a video series. It's four parts on tooling this floral pattern. And I had a bunch of people ask if we could go ahead and, and uh, antique and, and show that process on how we antique this. So we're gonna go ahead in this video real quick. It's just gonna be real short. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you. I was gonna, I didn't know what I was gonna do with these and we're gonna do some more of these probably. And so it'll be, uh, it'll be really neat because it'll give us something that we can do some paint work, some different finishing work, dye work and stuff like that on some of the future ones. And I thought about doing something like that on this one, but we're gonna go ahead and keep this one pretty traditional. And I'm just gonna do a, uh, what I call a light oil antique is what we call that in the shop. And so I'm gonna show you my process on that. We have done a video in the past on antiquing, but I don't know that we went far enough and answered enough questions. It's a pretty old video. And so we're just gonna go ahead and take this opportunity and uh, redo that right now. And I'm gonna show you exactly how we do that. So let's head over there to the oil bench and we'll get this oiled. All right guys, so this is our oil bench here. And basically all this is is just a two by four box, two by four frame. And then there's a piece of sheet metal in there that's put into where it's got just a little bit of curve in it throughout the entire length. And then I've got it blocked up on this other end over here to where um, any any excess oil whenever you're oiling things saddle fenders oil, oil and parts any excess oil can run down and then we've got a funnel and a little uh, gallon jug that catches the excess oil I've got a little filter in that funnel as well to kind of take out any bits that might be in there from repairs mainly they get this thing kind of nasty but anyhow that's just kind of how I oil it just kind of keeps you from having to get oil on your bench or anything else you put paper down the paper gets dirty and so I really prefer an oil and bench, something like that. And then I've just got a, a just a tub here. It's just an old plastic um, uh, pan. And so we've got that there with some oil in it. Now the oil that I use, this is not important as far as the name brand. You didn't, this doesn't make a difference, but basically it's just olive oil is all that I use. And this just happens to be the brand that our restaurant supply company has here locally. And um, I order it straight from them. They're just uh, normal olive oil that they would use in a restaurant. You don't necessarily need to get this exact brand, uh, any olive oil to work. You can also use vegetable oil, needs foot oil, uh, peanut oil, there's any of those would be good. Uh, so there is some discussion on whether these, these kind of oils as far as using olive oil or vegetable oil, if they attract more rodents or not. I haven't seen any case of that. Um, I don't know how true that is. I think rodents are gonna chew on leather if it's available. And so if you have a rodent population, then you're probably gonna have them chewing on your stuff. So I don't think the oil is uh, is that big of a factor. And the olive oil is clean, it's thin, and it's much easier to get everything even. I had a big problem with uh, some Neats foot oil that we were getting for a while on new stuff, especially. It was very hard to get it even when you were oiling uh, different products. So uh, especially on new stuff. So I just don't. I just prefer not to use Neats foot oil myself. And olive oil is easy to get, and plus I get extra and I cook with it at home. So that's that's a good deal for for us. Um, and so, but buying it in the gallon jugs, I think it cost me about ninety dollars for six gallons. And so that's a that's a it's not any more expensive than Neats foot oil or anything else would be. So that's what we use. Um, as far as application, when you're putting the oil on, I use just pads like this just sheepskin pads we keep a number of them cut we've had a few people ask where are we getting these well we build saddles mainly is the bulk of our business and so um you know even building one or two saddles a month i end up with boxes of big remnants of sheepskin like this just drop-offs from a sheepskin hide and so we save those in a box and then those are what i cut my pads out of and um if you're if you're a, a a small item craftsman, you're not building saddles, you don't have sheepskin laying around everywhere in scraps, try to find a, a, a local or semi-local saddle shop or even somebody online. If they're building saddles, they've probably got more of this than they can they can use and they can sell you some or, you know, I usually give a bunch of it away to buddies when they come by here. If they need sheepskin, I'm giving it away up most of the time, but I don't have enough to ship out to everybody, but I'm just saying I've got, it's pretty common to have a lot of scraps. So a lot of your saddle makers are, they'll have some scraps that they'll want to get rid of and stuff. So that's how, that's where I get them. But you could certainly use a sponge or anything else. I like the sheepskin just because it's putting some other stuff to use that I would normally not have a use for. So, and it works well. So on something that we're oiling like, like this that we put some time into, that's a new product, something like that, um, I'll usually almost always grab a newer newer kind of pad just because I, I don't, we, we do repair too, so there's no telling what's in this pad here as far as um, oiling some of the repair stuff and, and things like that or rains and, and different things. People come in, we'll oil their, their boots or whatever, you know, it is. So I usually won't use those. I'll get a new one so it's clean. It's so our oils clean, our products, you know, we put a lot of time into tooling that. 
And so what I'll usually do when I'm oiling is I'll get a little oil on my pad and then I'll run it across that grate to take some of it off. I don't want a ton on there. If you're going to go dark and you know you're going to go dark on this and you want it you know, fairly deep in color, then you can certainly go on it pretty heavy that first, that first coat. What I'm going to show you is one of my most popular finishes, which is what we just call a light oil antique. And so I just want to give it a nice even uh, coat, this first coat. It's not going to be super heavy, but I want to see that color change. And so that's what I'll use it. I get a little bit of oil on my pad and then I'll wipe just a little bit off. I'm not, you know, trying to strain it all. I'm just trying to get the excess out. And then now I should be able to go on evenly. And I want to start kind of in the middle, work my way out usually. Um, it's just kind of how we, how I do it. Um, it's going to, it's going to tend to take in more oil from the edges where you cut your edges. Now in this piece, we've already slicked this. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. So I went ahead and edged it and slicked it when I finished the video up. But normally my edges wouldn't be done yet. They would just be, uh, just a cut edge. And that's going to usually wick in a lot more oil right at the beginning. So that's why I start in the middle and kind of work my way out to the edge. The thing you don't want to do is pull like this to where you're putting a lot of oil on that, that cut edge because it will, you'll get a darker spot around the outside of the of the work. And so you kind of want to work your way out and I'll put just a nice even coat on there. And we're, since we're not using a lot of oil, we can be sure that it's all even from the start. Because a lot of guys, you know, if you use a ton of oil, you get a real dark spot, but then you gotta bring everything else up to that dark spot. And then your whole piece is gonna be darker than you intended. So we'll go ahead and just use a real light coat and bring it up to that light coat, okay? Um, you can always go darker, you can't back up. Once you get too dark, you're too dark and you can't back up off of that. So you wanna always start out lighter than normal. So the thing we wanna do while we're here is go ahead and put a light coat, very light coat on the back. You wanna be real careful that this is a super light coat on the back piece if you're not gonna line this. If you were gonna line this piece of leather, you would not put uh, oil on the back here because your glue will not stick. You won't get a, a good adhesion on your liner and so your liner won't stick real good and, and uh, and you won't be able to do that. So what we want to do is just put a nice light coat since this will be exposed. I've already sewn this piece too. Um, like I said, I didn't know what, what where we were going with these pieces and I was just playing around. So I went ahead and sewed it, sewed my border and all that. I would normally not do all the, any kind of sewing or edge slicking or anything until this piece was completely oiled, antiqued and finished. Then I would come in and assemble and do my sewing and edge slicking. But we're kind of doing this one kind of off because I didn't know exactly what we're going to do with it. But anyway, if you're not going to if you're not going to line it, you can certainly put oil on it. Just be careful. Don't put too much. Just a little bit goes a long way on the back. We're just trying to make it where it's not it doesn't look like just raw leather that's not oiled at all. Um, and so this rough outside, we just want to put just a really light coat. If you put too much, it can make it through to the top and darken your top as well, especially on your thinner leathers. So if you're working in five six ounce, you know seven eight ounce stuff like that you don't want to put a lot of oil back here. You want to be real careful because it, it can seep into the top because now you've got oil coming in from the top and the bottom. And so you can get it a little, a little too dark too fast. That's why I say it's better just do small light coats, work your way up. Got a light coat here, light coat here. That'll probably be the only coat of oil we'll put back here. And then we'll let this sit. Uh, 20, 30 minutes, maybe even an hour, I'll go work on something else. We'll just let it do its thing. It'll sit there and, and migrate and even itself out. And then we'll come back to it. And if we get a dark spot here or there, then we'll go ahead and touch that up um, at that time with maybe a second coat. But it, every leather acts a little bit different whenever you go to oil in it. So Wicket and Craig's gonna get darker a lot faster in my experience. Uh, Herman Oak tends to stay a lot lighter. And so you need to use a little bit more oil if you're going a little darker. Um, and then some of your import leathers and different things, some of those, you can't get them dark no matter how much oil you put on them. And so it's just kind of depends on what leather you're working with, stuff like that. So I highly suggest small coats, experiment with some scraps if you need to, if there's a specific color that you're going for. But so here, we're, you know, we're going to go light oil. We're going to kind of see where that goes and we'll come back and check on it. So it's been about 30, 40 minutes. And as you can tell, we've still got a little bit of a dark area in here. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna touch up these lighter areas in the pattern and just try to bring it up to this, these darker areas and uh, get, get it a little bit more balanced out. Now here, you don't need to go with a, in with a lot, of le a lot of oil. It's better to, to kind of go just with what's left in the pad and just work your way up. And so you can actually spot treat and just kind of go where where your lighter areas are and not go back over where it's already dark because if we do that we're just going to make it a little bit darker 
and so we're going to keep chasing it if we do that so i want to just go in the areas that are lighter and you can see there it, it already kind of looks like it matches a little bit more and so now we'll let this set for another 15 20 minutes and it should look a lot more balanced and uh and then if it looks good we'll go ahead and seal it and go on to antiquing but like I said, don't be scared of the spot treat. You don't have to do the entire thing every time because that darker spot is going to continuously get a little bit darker until you kind of get to its end point. And then you have to bring everything else to it and the whole thing's going to be darker than you wanted. So these areas in here, we didn't add any oil to because they were already kind of too dark. So now we'll let that sit, kind of even out, and we'll go from there. All right, so we've given this some time. If you've got the opportunity, if you've got the time, you, you can certainly let this sit overnight after e between each coat and that kind of thing. Um, we're, we don't really have that luxury a lot of times, and so we'll kind of, you know, I've been looking at it enough um, over the years that I can kind of tell where it's going to dry to as far as where it's going to kind of dull out to. And um, this is actually pretty well what color it's going to end up being. It's, it maybe could take just a little bit longer and it may lighten up still just yet a little bit more. But right now it looks pretty good. It looks pretty even. Uh, we don't have really any overly dark areas that we need to be worried about. And so we're going to go ahead and step forward. Um, like I said, 15, 30 minutes, sometimes 45 minutes, an hour is, is usually plenty of time. But if, you, if you're worried about it and you really want to make sure you tune in and get that, that color just right, then you can certainly wait uh, overnight or even a whole afternoon or something like that if you're not in a hurry. But this looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and step forward now and call this our light oil, so the base color of what we want. And that's what you're going for. You want what is my darkest or what is the base color of the leather going to end up being? And so this would be what I would call a light oil. And that's what we're going for on here. So we're gonna go ahead and seal this and get it prepared for antiquing. And then we'll go on to the next step. So we'll go ahead and go over here and seal this right quick. So the stuff that I use is tan coat. This is what I use for my resist and for my final finish. Um, and I use this predominantly on everything. And you can certainly use Y.O. Sheen or what used to be called Neat Lac, all that kind of stuff. Those are more of a lacquer base and those I would not recommend at all for anything that's got paintwork on it. Because when you go to, to wipe that on with any kind of acrylic on there, it's going to lift that and smear it. So if you're doing any kind of paintwork, I, I don't advise using any kind of Y.O. Sheen or, or um, lacquer base type finishes. Angelus also makes a nice finish that goes well with their paints. And... Um, and I think it's a lot like the tan coat. Super Sheen is another one that you can use. Again, that one's a pretty hard finish and it's gonna seal it really, really well so that you can't go back in oil afterwards. And so, but tan coat, the reason I use it predominantly on saddle, the majority of the things that we build need to be oiled over, over the life of them. Um, because if you're not oiling it, the leather's drying out day by day. And so I like the tan coat because you can actually get oil through it, even right after you've put it on and it's dried and it's brand new. Um, it'll sit on top for a little bit, but overnight it will actually penetrate through the tan coat and actually still be absorbed into the leather. And so I'm just a big fan of the tan coat. I have good luck with it. And so I use it as my resist as well as my final finish. And there's another one that's similar to tan coat called bag coat. And a lot of times I'll use those names interchangeably, but it is a different formula. Um, I'm not really sure on all the logistics of what, what makes it different, but there's another one called bag coat that Five Beans makes. Um, but the tan coat is what I've had the best luck with, and so that's what we use here. And so what we're going to do is just get a little bit of the tan coat. Again, I don't want gobs of it. I'm going to kind of wipe some of it off on the top of my, my jug there. And then we just want to do the same thing, just like if you were oiling. You know, you'll start in the middle and work your way out to the side. And... Um, and just be sure to get good coverage on there. I will usually do a pretty good liberal coat on here. I mean, I don't want it just sopping wet, but I want to get a good good coverage on this so that it seals that leather to an extent so that the uh, antique can be removed fairly easily where we don't want it. And so that's basically, when you're antiquing, that's basically what you're doing is you're sealing, you're, you're, you're getting your main color first, okay? So you're gonna get your main oil color you're also going to do any kind of dye work, paint work, any of that stuff's gonna be done before we ever go to the oil and bench. So if you are doing any kind of dye work or paint work, that you're gonna do that first before you even oil it. And so then you'll go and oil it, and now we're, we're, we're kind of saying we're done, we're gonna seal this off. And then the antiquing process comes in after the fact. So once we get this rubbed in nice, then we'll let that dry really well. And I like to give this a good, Again, depending on your humidity, depending on your shop's conditions, 
I like to give it a good 30 minutes to an hour, even overnight's better if you can, and just to let that dry really good. If you don't, and this, this tan coat or any finish is a little bit damp or a little bit sticky, that antique will kind of stick down into it and it's harder to get it to get it off. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in a minute, but, but right now that's what we're going for. We're just gonna seal it and let it dry really well. So we're gonna to give this, it'll probably take 30, 45 minutes here in the shop for this to dry. So in the meantime, we'll go work on something else. Okay, so we've got our piece. It's been, been a little bit of time and all this is dry. This finish is dry. So this piece, technically it's done. So if you weren't gonna antique this, this is what I would call done, ready to ship. Like it's, well, the edges aren't dyed yet, but you know, as far as the finishing goes, the finishing is done. So it's been old, it's been sealed, it's ready for use. It's ready to be uh, taken by the customer or shipped out to them or just used in general, it's, it's ready to go. But now if our, we're gonna antique, um, we're going to go ahead and do that, and I use the medium brown antique paste by Five Beans. So this is basically the consistency of boot polish, and it's just a paste. And I buy the, I use the medium brown. They have a really pretty mahogany color, a dark brown. They've got a bunch of different colors. I prefer the medium brown, it's just a personal preference, um, and so that's what I use on the majority of everything. Um, and I usually scoop some out and put it on a little piece of a little scrap piece of cardboard right here. And when this thing gets really nasty, we can just pitch it in the trash and uh, kind of saves a little bit of your paper on our finishing table. And so what we're going to do is, now that this is dried, the, the tan coat has been applied, it's dried, sealed. We're going to go ahead and take a nice uh, little pad, another little sheepskin pad. And I try to trim these for the application. I try to trim them pretty good so they're not too too thick so that you just don't get a bunch of hair in your, in your deal and stuff. And then I'll just get a little bit of antique. And you want to put this on pretty liberally. Um, you need to really just kind of work it in circles. And at this point, like I said, it's not actually absorbing into the leather like a dye or like an oil. So you can get a lot in one spot, not very much in another. And you don't have to worry about it a whole lot. You just need to work it around to where what we're trying to go for, what we're trying to accomplish is we're trying to get this into all the little cracks and crevices of the tooling so all of our knife cuts all of our deep uh undercuts or our lifters you know those are the, the impressions that we're trying to fill with antique and so i try to put this on relatively heavy and then just kind of go in circular motions back and forth different directions so that it's sure to get everywhere that it can down into our background and and all that kind of stuff so this piece has already been sewn I don't worry about the stitches when I antique. Some guys are very particular on whether their stitches are dirty. I personally don't care. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, my belts and stuff, the stitches are clean because I, I antique them before I sew them. When I'm building saddles, I, I hardly ever worry about that. Most of our smaller items are sewn and uh, assembled after they're antiqued and they're, so they're completely finished uh, before assembly. But on my saddles, there's just different parts of the saddle that that I prefer to build completely before I antique. And so I have dirty stitches on the saddle as far as antique stitches, but I don't I don't think it bothers me. I've seen a number of high-end saddle makers whose stitches are antiqued and it doesn't seem to bother them. And I think it, it doesn't take away from the work. So that doesn't bother me at all. But certainly if it does bother you, or if you want, if you prefer the white stitches without antique down in them, then and absolutely you would want to do all of your antique work and everything before you sew any, any, do any kind of sewing. Before you do any kind of sewing, you'd want to do that. But um, if it doesn't bother you, then it's not, it's not a hard and fast rule. It does not, you know, it's not against the law to antique your stitches. So now we've put the antique on, it's really heavy, it's down in all the cracks, we've moved it around, we've made sure that it's in all the decorative cuts, all the background pieces. You want to kind of just scan over it, make sure you didn't miss any places, a lot of your real deep undercuts, sometimes it's harder to get that antique down in there. So if you see one of those that's empty, you want to go ahead and fill it with antique, so you want to go back and move that stuff around. And then we'll let this sit, now the, the length of time that you let this sit will depend on your personal preference on, on the way you want it to look. If you like seeing a lot of antique, a real bold contrast, a uh, real dark antique down in the background and everything, you'll want to let this set longer. You can let it sit. I've actually let this sit overnight because I forgot about a piece and I could still get it off. It was tough, but it would come off. And you can actually take uh, a, a, just a light damp uh, a rag or something and it'll actually just lift right up because remember, it's not a dye. It's not dying into the leather. 
and so it's not absorbing into the leather and getting stuck on there so you can you've already sealed it so it should come off of here fairly easily now if you forget to seal this or resist it whether whatever resist you're going to use if you forget to do that before you apply this antique it's much harder to get it off and it actually will stain the leather so you want to be sure not skip the uh, resisting step but you your link you can decide on how long you want to leave this set normally in a normal work day on most of our finishes we'll let this set 10 15 minutes tops um if we just I, I don't like a whole lot of antique just piled on there but there's sometimes that it does look better so it's just kind of a personal you know judgment there on what you want to do this one here we're going to leave it on quite a bit longer um we're going to leave it on that full probably 15 minutes before we wipe it off but there's also nothing wrong with going ahead and wiping it off right at this point it's only going to look a lot lighter than if we let it sit on there longer so if we were to let this if we were to wipe this off right now we would get more of a a, a highlighting effect or more of a light antiquing effect not quite as heavy not quite as much contrast like i said there's no right or wrong here it's just whatever you prefer it to look like i know some guys that do some really really nice work and they'll let that sit on there for an hour two hours before they'll wipe it off and that's just the way they like that look. What you're doing is you're allowing the antique to dry so that you, you're you able to get less off at a, at a swipe. So you're leaving more of it down in there. So if this is still relatively wet when you go to wiping it off, you're able to kind of pick a lot of it up out of the background. And so it's not leaving as much in there. So again, it's just a drying time thing is what it is. It's not necessarily a staining thing. So we're just giving that antique a little bit more time to dry. So it's, it's up to you. It's your whatever you prefer your stuff to look like. Experiment with it. Play with it. Time it out and see how long works best for you to get the color that you want. Okay, so we've let this set for, I don't know, it's been five or ten minutes. I'm not going to let it set super long just because that's not the way I normally do it. So I'm going to go do it the way I, I would normally do it, which is not to leave it on very long. I know a lot of guys say, no, leave it, leave it alone. Leave it, leave it on there a little longer. But... I just don't want it super thick and so once it's on there you can see kind of along these edges here where it kind of almost looks like it's starting to dry and that's what you're that's what you're going for I mean but that stuff will come off you know you can see when you when you buff it it buffs right off and so now that's exactly what we'll do we'll get us you need to have you a few of these because they get pretty messy pretty quick and so what I normally do is just an initial an initial wipe just to kind of get the bulk of the antique and you can see how how dirty that one got and you said try not to waste them and, but i like to use clean pad when i can especially when we're doing kind of a little fine tuning here in a second so i'll get the bulk of it off and then i'll grab another another pad and you can already see you know you can see how much is left down in there some of that's still really wet and so if you're wanting to leave more in there you got to be a little careful right at this moment here so that you don't just pull a bunch of that out of there um, and you could also do an initial an initial wipe get the bulk of it off and then let the rest of this dry and then come back and buff it again um, there's so many ways to accomplish different slightly different looks in an antique finish that it's just a matter of getting getting it on there and playing with it and just trying to see what look you you like the best and kind of how you like it to look but that's about about what i would normally do right there and that color actually turned out just about right um leaving it on there that that length of time like i said i'm i'm usually crunched for time as far as you know i've got other projects to do too so we we don't uh freddie leaves his on up probably a lot longer than i do but usually when i'm antiquing i get it on and then kind of get it off of there and because i like a little bit of a not so dark i don't want too much contrast i just want a little bit but that's just me personally but you can see there kind of now you can see how it's enhanced a lot of these decorative cuts in here it's enhanced a lot of the undercuts you've got a lot more shadow down in there a lot more contrast um, anywhere you've used like a leaf liner or even a, uh, a flower center liner or something like that now you can see a lot more of that detail much much better than before and again it's not very it's not an everything everything deal I, I antique 99 percent of what i do but there are some times whenever we decide not to because it looks the way we want it to look at that moment or the way the customer wants it so uh antiquing is just a different look it's not something that has to be done every time 
And so now we'll go and do what we call the final finish, which is going to actually clean up. If you'll look real closely here, a lot of this kind of, it looks a little muddy and um, it just looks a little dull. So some of our color in our tooling looks a little dull, a little dulled out from the antique. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply one more coat of finish and that's going to go ahead and brighten everything back up and bring that life back in there. But we've got some good contrast going on right there. So let's go do that. So my lighting's a little bit better out here in this part of the workshop than it is where my finishing table is. But you can see here how the whole pattern just kind of has that little bit of haze to it. It doesn't really you know, pop. Uh, it's got a lot of contrast because we've antiqued everything. The background's a lot darker, undercuts, decorative cuts, but we still got just a little dull appearance going through there. So we're going to clean that up right now. What I do is I take our tan coat again. That's the finish that we used as the resist. And I'm going to go ahead and put one last coat on here. And you can certainly let this dry completely, you know, overnight, a couple hours, whatever you want to do. But it certainly doesn't hurt to do it right after you antique as well and so the only thing is that if you're going for that really dark contrast really you know heavy dark appearance in the background and stuff like that you'll want to let that dry completely because we are going to lift even more antique out right now our goal though is just to get the antique that's on everything that's raised up so it's kind of on the flower and the high spots. It's on these beams in the high spots and the, and the vines and scroll work. And so what we're going to do is clean that up. Basically, we're going to wash it with the tan coat and it's going to put a permanent seal um, on the rest of the piece. And so it's a final seal. So it's going to give it that, that luster and that color that, it, that you're looking for. So I try not to get down into the background too much. I'm just basically washing the high points is what I'm trying to do is clean off the high points of this. So like the flower centers, the, the, the main beams, any scrolls, uh, the veins inside of leaves, that's what we're trying to clean off. And so there now you can see that we've we've gotten the, the high points back to the base color that we were oiling for. So as you can see there, we've got much nicer color, a lot more contrast. It looks cleaner. It doesn't look dirty. And, um, and that's always kind of, kind of my biggest deal with antique is that, you know, if you don't do it right, it, it ends up kind of looking dirty and you don't want it to look hazy or, or kind of muddy. And so that final coat of tan coat is kind of the magic, magic trick that kind of keeps it from, from looking that way. You're just giving it a final cleaning. All right guys, so that's my antiquing process. Again, we've done this before, but this was a, hopefully a little bit more in depth and I had a lot of questions after that first one we did and I tried to answer them uh, best I could, but this video hopefully will be a good uh, companion to that one as far as just going in a little bit on it and, uh, and, and touching up on some stuff and just kind of explaining it a little bit more. Again, when it comes to the oil, you can use whatever oil you want. If you want to use olive oil, vegetable oil, peanut oil, or even just neat's foot oil, that's absolutely fine. Like I said, the only reason that I use uh, olive oil, one is that it's readily available here in town. I can buy it locally from a uh, local restaurant supply company. And then I don't have to wait and order it and, and different things like that and have it shipped to me. Um, and then as far as the needs foot oil, when it comes to needs foot oil that I was using, I was just having a lot of trouble with getting a lot of blotchy color. I don't know if it, the needs foot oil wasn't as clean as it used to be or what, but it just, it seemed like I would, it was harder to get an even coat and I was getting a lot more of, uh, of variances in my tones. And so with the olive oil, I don't fight that anymore. It's fairly easy to get it, get it really even as you've seen here. I mean, that stuff's really clean. And plus I cook with it. So every time I buy a case of six gallons, I take one home with me and I have to buy olive oil at home. So it's kind of two birds with one stone. And then as far as the antique, I'm pretty stuck on the five beans, uh, five beans paste. I've been using it for pretty much my entire career. That's what I was taught to use. And, and I know how it works. I know how to handle it. I know how to achieve what I'm trying to achieve with it, no matter the color that I'm using. 
Again, the color that I use on this is going to be the medium brown. That's just the color that I've always used. Um, I used a fair amount of the uh, mahogany early on and uh, just kind of got away from that. And I like the, the way the medium brown looks better to me. So that's what I use. So there's a bunch of different colors that Five Beans offers. So just kind of look at them, play with them. You can buy them in the smaller little jars. You don't have to buy these big quart jars that I buy. Um, but honestly, you're going to use a lot of it. Uh, so, so buy the smaller jars if you're trying to look and try different colors that's fine but then when you find when you find one that you like and you're going to stick with that then go ahead and i would advise getting the bigger jars because they you're just going to use a lot of it and you and it's not it's not necessarily wasteful you just go through a lot of it especially if you're doing a lot of belts and a lot of uh, portfolios and things like that that are heavily tooled they're going to use up a lot more of that antique when it comes to the sealer i have used the super sheen um, in this same process before and it works well the only thing like i said the only thing to remember about the finishes is the tan coat you can oil over the top of um, later on uh, right at the beginning when it's fresh it's kind of hard to get oil through it but i've taken saddles that i've just gotten done with we've just sealed them they're ready to go and i've noticed once you know the swells need just a little bit more oil they're just a little bit lighter than the rest I can actually go in and add oil on that and overnight that oil will migrate through the tan coat and actually darken that swell up some versus if I'm using say a lacquer based finish of some sort then I'm pretty much stuck I can't really get oil through that until years of wear whenever this thing is you know the, the finish is kind of worn off some plus in the repair shop we've cleaned a number of saddles over the years that were coated with a lacquer and that stuff is really tough to get off even on an old saddle and uh, almost to the point where we have to use a, a um, like an acetone or something like that to cut that out to cut through that and so uh, not i'm not really a big fan of the lacquer based finishes on anything that you would need to oil which is most leather products but like say on a belt or a portfolio those things probably aren't going to be in the weather and they're probably not going to be oiled anyway they're just going to be used and so then i wouldn't mind you know and i have used a lacquer based finish on there and it's it's fine it's a personal item it's, it's going to be better taken care of than, than something hanging in a barn uh, for the bulk of its life so but that's my deal on finishes so that's antiquing if you have any questions or uh, comments or if you have a different way of doing it be sure and comment below or send us an email i'll be happy to help you any way i can uh, but it's like i said it's pretty straightforward the biggest deal is don't forget to resist so i've seen a lot of projects in the past ruined because they oiled it and then just went straight to antiquing it and um, that antique can stain the leather and stuff like that so you want to be sure and lay down your resist first and uh and then move from there so if you haven't watched the video where we actually went through the whole process of tooling that pro that piece of leather right there with that pattern then there's a link down in the description you can sure click on that so i've got a blog post on our website that has all four of the videos in line on that uh within that post they're also here on our channel and then if you want to get the free pattern that goes along with it and try to tool that pattern then you, there's a link for that in there as well and you can go ahead and grab that uh we'll put a link for that down in the description too so you can grab it but also, if this is your first time here on the channel, be sure and subscribe and uh, let us know what you think about the videos. So we appreciate y'all and we'll see y'all in the next video.